Good morning, church. You are very good in receiving prayer, but you are not good after the prayer. Tell your neighbor, you are a good Christian in receiving. After receiving, very, very bad Christian. I'm telling you. Can you see the way you say you have been dancing, dancing, dancing? You sit quietly. You are very good in waiting upon the Lord. And when the Lord now comes, you are not good when God leaves. Once you are touched, after that touch, must follow by absolute trust in God that he is now working out the answer. No more anxiety, no more worry, as if you never pray at all. Before you are touched, you know what you are praying for. And once that touch, absolute trust. In who? In that process, there is no anxiety, no worry, no tension. Leave it for God once you are touched. But uh, after the touching, and you are still worried, as if you never pray at all, it's a waste. Such a touch is a waste. Christian all over the world today, all they know is pray for me. After the prayer, they don't know what to do next. That is why you see them fall into anxiety, full of worry, as if they never pray at all. You have a diabetic, and the doctor has given you a tablet you must take every hour or some hours. And you, you are here in the synagogue, sitting down with your tablet inside your pocket. Because anything can happen. As you are sitting down, if you don't use your tablet, your belief is that you collapse. Now, you are holding your tablet. After the prayer, you now begin to ask yourself, will I use my tablet again? Or I should not use my tablet? I need to see man ago and ask him whether I should still use my tablet or not. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus says, if you don't trust him with your tablet, you can never trust him without your tablet. If you don't trust Jesus with your tablet, you cannot trust him without your tablet. It's a wisdom, deep one. Like we are sitting down now, 80% of us here has a tablet in the pocket. Apartation, very common one. When I was touching a man there, he fell down, the apartheid tablet dropped on the floor. <laughs> you know what happened? When he fell down and fell down, immediately I left the place, he woke up and ran and carried his tablet. <laughs> he quickly ran. I was looking. The drug in his pocket fell. Immediately he, he stood up. The next thing, he quickly went to grab his tablet and put it in the pocket. Why? In case I'm not here. I don't want to die. <laughs> you know it's very difficult to trust something you receive free. Something you receive free is the most difficult thing to trust. A man just look at you and say, I give you this lesser gym of 25 million. Ah, I don't know this man. I have never met him before. Give me me. You can never believe. You only believe someone whom you have served in one way and the other. He has sent you an error, you have done something for him in the past, you have helped him in the past. If he gives you such a lesser gift, you cannot doubt it. So in the same day, when Jesus sees you, he hears you perpetually free. 
It's always difficult to believe. Compared to where you have spent millions, you have spent fortune, and where Jesus just touch you and say you are here, it's always difficult. It takes the grace of God. Take this proverb, it will help you. If you cannot trust Jesus with your tablet, you cannot trust him without your tablet. They say, when Jesus do things, it's not you that will ask Jesus whether I should not use it or not. If you don't believe in with tablet, you cannot believe in without tablet. So if Jesus does not want you to use it again, naturally you just forget it. It, it you'll be absent. Second day, third day, you don't remember. Ah, I have not been using this thing. I just naturally forgot it. That is how Jesus works. Jesus has a way of working. If you understand me, let us see your hand. Look, something you take every one hour, every one hour you have to take it. Something will remind you. Is it that your blood pressure will rise? Is it that you have headache? Is it that your tongue will be dry? Is it that you find yourself going to toilet frequent? There's many signs that will remind you that you have to take your tablet. But in this case, you just forgot your tablet because your life seemed to be normal. Second day, third day, you don't remember that. Ah, see me, oh. This thing have not been taking it, oh. It's Jesus that is working. He has the ability to block the sense of your memory. If all the symptoms you are seeing, you cannot see it again. It is when there is symptom. Your body is warm, headache, throat is dry, you cannot sleep, you have serious headache, that will remind you your drug. Healing don't just come with that message. Healing comes with message. Deliverance comes with the message. If you have not been grounded with the word and you receive healing, you will likely lose the healing. Tell your neighbor. If you have not been grounded, with the word of healing and you receive healing you are likely to lose the healing if you have not been granted that if you have not received a message concerning that healing message is maintainer it's like a, giving you a car without teaching you how to maintain it you just receive a car a brand new car and you, you are ignorant of maintainer, how to wash the car, how to change the tire, how to pump the tire, how to clean the glass. You don't know anything about it. It means that vehicle will soon knock down. You must have thorough knowledge of how to maintain that vehicle. You must be grounded with the word to maintain healing to maintain salvation, to maintain deliverance. You must be grounded. Some of the challenges we are facing is simple. I make the word first place. I assure the word, the word of God. I make it first place. I make my schedule around the word of God. Your practice has not been like that. That is why it's difficult for you to trust in God's word. I make my schedule around the word of God. I take it first place. I assert the word. I disagree, I agree. I agree with the word of God and I disagree. I disagree with any condition any situation, any circumstances that contrary to the word, I disagree. And I agree with the word of God. I choose to agree. But when you are making your schedule, you don't carry God along. You don't carry God along. Already you, you have made your schedule today. When you live here, you are going to the meeting. You must live here so-so time and that so time. You don't carry God along. We have not been grounded. When we are grounded in the world, 
you take it first place. You are short the word. How do we wait and believe that he is working out the answer? How can we wait without worry again? Without worry over the situation? When a man of God says, you are here in Jesus' name, say amen. And you will no longer worry, anxiety, as if you never pray at all. So this is message you need to receive now. Because if not, ignorantly, you will continue to lose your healing, you continue to lose them. Why receive them, you lose them. Why receive them, you keep losing them. Because that worry alone nullify your blessing. You say, man of God, I'm having a headache. I say, be here in Jesus' name. And I turn back, and immediately you start saying, I don't even know whether I'm here now. <laughs> that statement alone nullify that healing. Because you begin to compare where you spend millions to receive healing and you are not receiving healing. Compared to where somebody will just touch you and say you are healed. Ah, no, I don't know. Um, this healing, this kind of healing, I don't know. That nullify immediately what you receive. If it is God, it is freedom and it is free. Tell your neighbor, if it is God, it is freedom and it is free. But if it is man, you have to labor for it. You pay with your sweat. Pay with your sweat. So this is what we don't know. Things of God is mystery. That what you receive is free does not call for questioning, does not call for doubt. It is God. We don't need to struggle to believe. Faith comes spontaneously, just naturally. But today we keep struggle to believe. You have to read Psalm 35 till the time. Midnight, you wake up, you open Bible under your pillow. 12 midnight, you, you set your alarm and you, you wake up. You say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's alive. Amen. It's alive. <laughs> We don't need to struggle to do it. To, to believe. Believe is natural. It's natural. Many of your children in the past, they abandoned your house. They abandoned their family. They say their father is a drunkard. They abandon them. They say they are born again. Serious one. You could not find them. But suddenly now today, they are back to the wall. When you are struggle to believe, you will still come back to the wall. When you are struggle to accept Jesus, you will soon leave Jesus. Tell your neighbor, if you struggle to believe Jesus, you will soon leave Jesus. Good example, a brother or sister that is a smoker or drug addict, you will now lock them inside the house. You are not going to smoke, you are not going to drink today. You lock your son inside the house. You say he must fast for three days. It's not from his... <laughs> it's not from his heart to fast. You know, this of our brother and our son, they are very tough. You now study him. You have been telling him that you are a drug addict. So you follow me to church. He say, no, I'm not going to church. Anytime you go to church, he will go to the club. One day you will now set it up, you call your pastor. You deceive him, you lock the gate. And your pastor is in there, he said, three days fasting. He said, please, I'm not fast, you must fast. 
They took the everything, the food, no food, nothing. You want to force him to be delivered. No, it's not possible. Why you are telling him to come to church and refuse? You can, because of him, pray and ask God to touch him. Why he's in the nightclub smoking? He will just leave that place one day. It could be head by headache or something will happen and they will bring him home. By the time he will realize himself, say, Mommy, I'm sorry. I'm tired of this life. He will not know that it's your prayer. Then you take it up from there. Many of us, we have tried it in the past. You try, you struggle to believe, but later you're becoming worse in unrighteousness. We don't struggle to believe. Believe is natural, it's spontaneously. Let me tell you, when you work harder to get something and you could not get that thing, it's very frustrating. You work, you labor, and at the end of the day, you could not achieve that. It's very, very frustrating. But when you don't work harder, you live it naturally. Look at what I say. Work as if everything depends on you and pray as if everything depends on God. Things of God is a decision. You just sit down and say, God, I'm tired of my former life. I want to take a new life. Simple. Take a decision and start your prayer from there. Our relationship with God, this is a question of the heart. In our heart, whom do we trust? So when we start praying now, you begin to move your body. You begin to move your body. You begin to move your body. How do we know that your heart is also moving like that? If I say amen, and all of you say amen, it's not all of you that say amen. In truth and faith, before you can say amen, you must believe with all your heart. We don't serve God with our heart again. Our relationship with God, this is a question of the heart. In our heart, whom do we trust? That is it. If you know that, you begin to get it right, because we are getting it wrong. No matter how educated you are, if you apply your education to serve God, you get it wrong. The person you trust in your heart is your God. Whether it's tree, whether it's palm oil, whether it's water, is that your God? The person you trust in your heart is your God. So you say, it's a lie, amen, it's a lie. You keep saying that to God. Whereas in your heart, you don't trust God with your heart. The person you trust in your heart is your God. Not the person you worship. Faith is of man's heart. Faith is a heart that believes God. So whom you trust in your heart is your God. And then we don't trust two things with our heart. But with our body, our confession, we can trust million things. But with our heart, just one thing we trust. If you have been trusting God with all your heart, God will only, not one of those things. You want to hold me to say, this morning I will go to shore. When it is 12, I will leave. I will go to my community meeting. You are comparing God. God should not be compared. If you have trust God with all your heart, you will not compare God. What you trust in your heart, you can never compare anything with what you trust with your heart. But with your mouth, with your confession, you can trust thousands of things. But with your heart, only one thing you can only trust. What you trust with your heart can move you from this place, as we are talking now. If you receive a phone call, that hello, hello, that million dollar is ready now. You just tell your neighbor, say, where is Osha here? Where is the usher? They say, that man is usher. I'm pressed. I'm pressed. Because we know how to lie. If you want something, we can crook lie within a second. 
Immediately you tell your colleague, to help you, I'm pressed. I'm pressed. You may not even mind to say, I have diabetes. Because you want to leave that place immediately. They will now rush to call Usher for you. Usher, this, you will not be the one to talk. People want to help you. They say, help this man, help this man, he's pressed. You now, in order to get your way, you now hold. <laughs> See, you get to the restroom. By the time you get to the restroom, Osha will say, this is the toilet. Okay, thank you. You lock there. You will now call the member and say, you mean that is do what? It's ready. <laughs> you mean it's ready? I, because I can hear you well. T.B. Joshua was talking. There is so much noise. <laughs> Whether you hear him well, but you would like to hear it so that it will gladden your heart. Hey, I said that too. Two million dollars is ready. So you can come immediately so that you sign a check. I'm not right now because I will be traveling to UK this evening. Okay, okay. Now, give me two minutes. You will not finish, you just rush down, rush out. You abandon your car. You know, bike is very fast. <laughs> and uh, for so long, you have not been taking bike. You just take by you abandon your car, your wife, your children. You take a by. They get there, say, oh, it's ready. You call your wife, wait for me in the church. When they close, you have to sleep. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that is the person you trust with all your heart. What is that? Money. 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 You can betray anything for the person you trust with your heart. If you trust God with all your heart, hmm, our life will be better than this. You cannot compare God with anything when you want to trust him with all your heart. We are here today. You say you trust God right from home, even you that came from your country. If there's a phone call before you leave that, yes, that contract is ready to be executed and you have been looking for it for long, you postpone your journey. Maybe it's a matter of buying a new ticket, and this contract will bring more money. You postpone it in, in for that, you know what I mean? What you try with your heart is only, you don't compare anything with what you trust with your heart. You just have to begin to trust God with all your heart today. Heart is a place where you cannot trust two things. It's not possible. You trust God in your heart, you trust money in your heart, it's not possible. You just have to trust one. That is hard for you. You can confess Jesus is Lord. And at the same time, confess other things, confess other things, confess that. But in the heart, only one thing is allowed to work there. So your relationship with God. It's a question of the heart. In your heart, whom do you trust?